What is up everybody, it's your boy Brando here with Brando Reviews and today we're going to be checking out this G-Track Pro microphone by the company Samson. So you see it right here, um, you also see the Q2U right over here which is another microphone by Samson, a more budget option. And we'll be testing this out in a separate video and we might even have a video that compares the two directly against each other to see which one's better for the money. But this right here, the G-Track Pro. It's a USB microphone and it's $129.99 on Amazon. So this is $130 and this is more like $60, so about half the price of this one. But they have different features, different uses, different designs, different build qualities, so um, we will be getting to that comparison. So here it is right here. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and say a few things that it says here on Amazon about it so that we can get a general idea of what this microphone's about. It says it's good for podcasters, streamers, songwriters and content creators. Any microphone can really work for anyone, but of course we're gonna see what's special about this one. Dual one inch condenser capsules, all in one USB microphone, cardioid bi-directional and omnidirectional pickup patterns, 24 bit 96 kilohertz resolution, quarter inch instrument input for connecting guitars and one eighth inch stereo headphone output. So uh, a lot of words right there, and uh, we can see some of the pattern things here. I'll put this on the screen right now. The cardioid, the omnidirectional, and the figure eight. These are the different patterns you can choose right here for uh, depending on your use case, and it tells you what it's best for right there. And you can see it here on the screen compared to the rest of them. Compared to the Q2U, you can see the feature comparison, and uh, also to their Meteor mic, CO1U, Satellite, and Go mic. And inside it, we get the instruction manual right here. Very nice quality instruction manual. Get the microphone right here. Comes folded upside down for easy transportation. And we'll go ahead and get this one set up right there. And we'll see what else is in the box right here. You have a bag, you have goodies, and that's just about it. So let's go ahead and see what this is. You get the power cord here, which you can tell has already been unwrapped by me. So. Uh, yeah, and then this just plugs in right down here at the bottom. Just align it up and you can see it just there. Very easy. And then you can turn it down just like so. And you also get another uh, piece right here. This is a adapter. I'm not exactly sure of the size right there, but this is if you don't want to use this heavy stand, you can unscrew it and you can put this microphone on different kinds of stands with this heavy piece of metal right here. Um, for instance, if you're going to put it on an arm and have it hang over you. Okay, so... Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get a little closer here so we can actually see this better. So it has everything you need right here and a very nice heavy uh, package. We're gonna get the scale out and see how heavy this is because it's quite heavy. So let's go ahead and do that. All right guys, we're gonna go ahead and put this on the scale. So if you want to, you can go ahead and comment down below how much you think this thing is gonna weigh. Um, so go ahead and do that if you want. So here we go and look at that. We're at a whopping 3.73 pounds. All right guys, so here we are. We're a little bit closer to the microphone right here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just connect it to the computer so we can see the LED turn on. So first things up here at the top, you can see the green LED right here. When you press the mute button in, you can see the light changes to orange showing you that you have the device muted right there. So the first switch you see right there is the microphone switch dial. This is used to control or adjust the sensitivity of the internal microphones. If you go down a little bit lower, you have the instrument dial right there. That's used to control the input level of the instrument input. So whatever you have plugged into the back of it. And then down there at the bottom, you have the volume dial, which is used to control the overall volume of the 1 8 inch headphone output, which is on the back of the device. So that's really it for the front of this device, except for the uh, dials at the top. With the difference between mono and two track being that mono sends the input and instrument input mixed together as one mono signal, while the two track... Uh, sends the microphone input and instrument input separately. So it just depends on if you want more control over the audio you're using, if you're even using an instrument with this device. If you're just using this for voiceovers and nothing else, you'd keep it on mono basically. Figure eight on the far left, so you'll hear from here. It'll pick up audio from here, but it will try to reject audio from these two sides. The cardioid function, which is the middle dial right there. You'll only get audio from here, nothing from here, here, or here, theoretically at least. And then on the far right, you have the Omni. So it'll pick up audio from here, 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 and here. To sum it up, basically, figure eight you'll use if you have a person speaking here and here. You will use omnidirectional if you have people speaking from all over the room. And you'll use cardioid if you're recording audio from directly in front of it only. 
You can see it's very wide here at the top. It's all metal. This entire device is heavy metal right here. So we're gonna go ahead and move to the sides here. You can see the uh, mount right here just sort of loosely floats inside of it like so. See the bottom right here, it has a foam pad on it. And it seems to be made out of a very thick zinc alloy from what I believe. You can see a little closer down here at the bottom where it connects and you can turn it all the way around inside itself just like so. So we're gonna go ahead and move to the back now and look at the inputs on the back. The back of this device is a little damaged, but that's my fault. So whenever you receive your device, it's gonna be a lot better condition than mine. You just flip it on or off, just like so. And what that does is it switches the direct monitor on and off, which is if you have a direct line in here, if you're live listening to what you're, uh, what's being spoken to through here. Then you have your 3.5 millimeter headphone in right here, as well as your one quarter mono instrument input right here for connecting instruments, like an electric guitar or whatever you have. So that really covers all of the switches and buttons on this device. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna move to the computer and actually see it in action. And we're gonna show you how to set it up if you have a MacBook with Audacity and probably with a lot of other programs too. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna move over to the computer now. We're gonna to go to system preferences. We're going to open up the sound tab and we're going to make sure it's on input and not output. And we're gonna to switch to Samson G-Track Pro right here. So once you do that, you're gonna to wanna to open up your Audacity. If you had Audacity opened already, you're gonna to wanna to force quit it and open it again. Otherwise it won't read the new microphone selection. I'm gonna press okay. And you can see up here at the top built-in microphone, we're gonna to switch to Samson G-Track Pro and now we can actually start recording. As you can see, it's already picking up my voice and recording, and then we can pause it right here, stop it. And uh, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move to a better setting here and actually test the audio. All right, guys, so we're actually gonna switch to the audio on the G-Track Pro now and play through Audacity. I'm gonna be speaking of a Walt Disney World uh, article that I wrote here. So we're gonna go ahead and press record here, and we're gonna test it out. What is up everybody, this is Brando from Brando Land, and today's topic is Disney World Among a Pandemic. Walt Disney World opened its doors to the public for the first time on October 1st, 1971. In the nearly 50 years of operation, Walt Disney World has only closed its doors seven times, with the first being in 1999. That is, until the recent COVID-19 pandemic swept across the nation. Since March 16th until now, May 21st, the parks have remained closed and will continue to remain so. With parks remaining closed, cast members struggle to survive while Disney has furloughed employees after idling, sitting without the ability to open back up. Although disastrous for the company, this measure is estimated to save Disney $500 million in costs monthly. Hit hard, Disney World executives have decreased anticipated park spending by $900 million among the quarter two earnings reports. Rumors are circulating that Walt Disney World will not even reopen until 2021, with requirements including wearing face masks or even possibly temperature readings upon entry to the park. Thanks for listening, guys, and stay safe out there. Be sure to check back for more news at Brando Land. Take it easy. All right, everybody. So what we're going to do now is we're going to read a short story. Um, from astronomy.com. NASA shuts off systems on Voyager 2, saving power for long haul into interstellar space. So this is just kind of a factual article here, but uh, something cool, so I'm just gonna read it. By Corey Haynes, published Wednesday, July 10th, 2019. Launched in 1977, Voyager 1 and 2 are the longest running spacecraft still operating at more than 11 billion miles from home. Decades after the end of their nominal goal of exploring the outer solar system planets, they still get their power from the same three radioisotope thermoelectric generators, or RTGs. They have served them for years, but with these generators yielding less power every year, the spacecraft has started to flag. Mission controllers have had to make some tough calls about which instruments to prioritize, and recently made the call to turn off heating for Voyager 2's cosmic ray instrument. The instrument itself is still functioning for now, despite operating at conditions of negative 74 degrees Fahrenheit, when it was only tested down to negative 49 degrees. The craft has five functional instruments remaining, which it still uses to collect data and send back to Earth on its long journey into deep space. 
After all these years, the Voyager spacecraft launched in 1977 as twin spacecraft, each with 10 instruments to explore space and tour the solar system, sending back humanity's first close-up look at most of the outer planets. Voyager 1 visited Jupiter and Saturn before heading for deep space, while Voyager 2 swung by those planets, plus Uranus and Neptune, its trajectory carrying it off at a slower pace. But since 1989, both have been exploring the empty space beyond the planets and returning priceless information about how far the solar atmospheres extend its influence. It was only in 2018 that Voyager 2 officially entered interstellar space, returning information on how the space environment changed and has finally left the sun's sphere of influence. Very interesting read. I'll put the link down below if you're interested. But um, guess we'll see how it sounds. So there you guys go. This was just a quick overview of the Samson G-Track Pro Professional USB Microphone. As you can see, I have it face the other direction right now, and I have it set to the figure eight position, so we're listening to it from the rear of it right now. Um, I don't have a second person, so I couldn't really test all the different angles, but we're kind of testing the back right now with one audio source. But overall, I think this is really a fantastic microphone. It is a little pricey at $130, but you really do get what you pay for. I went back and listened to the audio that we recorded on Audacity, and it sounded very crisp, very beautiful, all things considering. It's my voice, so it can only be so good. Um, but overall, the crispness sounded good. It picked up the clarity very good. I had all the settings here on the front all set to the uh, generic up position, so I didn't really mess with too much of it. But there was a lot of different settings here that will let you get really exactly what you want. You can use this for a single person, a dual conversation, an entire room. You can hook up your instruments to it. It's a very good quality. Um, I do believe it has a pretty good warranty with it too. But the build quality, it just doesn't seem like it will ever break basically. So if you guys want to pick one of these up, there will be a link down below to purchase it. If you guys enjoyed this video, you can subscribe down below. Press the like button if you really like the video. And if you guys got any questions or comments, you can leave them down below and I'll get right back to you. So thanks for watching guys and I hope you have a good one. Peace. <laughs> we are the world. We are the children. We are the ones who make a brighter day. So let's start giving. There's a choice we're making. We're saving our own lives. It's true. We'll make a better day. Just you and me. Woo. Nelly.